Hello, hello. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to, and hopefully you don't see this annoying low system resources thing that was not on my computer before, but welcome to the September slash October um, reading series for Inclusive Theater of Western New York. We're excited to have you here. Um, this month, we will be featuring, I should put my screen on here. There we go. Uh, we will be featuring um, shows that were written as part of the Citizens Network uh, No Labels, No Walls Festival. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of background before I tell you what we have on deck tonight. Um, the festival took place Wait, on Amy, August something. Hello? Hello, Virginia? Give you a little bit of back. Okay, I think we might have lost Virginia, possibly. That's okay. No, I'm here. Okay, hello. Okay, so we're yeah. streaming live and we're going well. So okay. you're good to go. So um, just to go okay. back a little bit, our uh, festival took place on August 25th and 26th as part of the No Labels, No Walls Festival. And the theme this year was creating action together. And the main focus of this action was social justice. Um, so we reached out to some folks who are outstanding playwrights um, and asked them if they had work they wanted to share with us that was already previously done or if they had something new they wanted to share. Um, again, the, the festival took place uh, this year online from August 25th to 26th. The No Labels, No Walls team um, are part of uh, the Kuku Nori, which is based in Helsinki and the Strindberg Laboratory, which is based in Los Angeles. So it was really awesome. The work that we did and the actors that were participating were seen globally, which was a really fun opportunity for us. Um, and we hope to be a part of it in the future again. But we would be remiss if we did not share it with our folks who maybe did not <laughs> know about No Labels, No Walls. So our job tonight is to show you these videos. Um, talk a little bit about the actors and the directors and the writers and um, positively not talk about them, but talk with them. And then after that, um, open the floor up to some conversations about social justice and, and where we should go in the future uh, with this. So our order tonight is we will be first viewing Testing Day, which was written by Maggie Boyle. Um, then followed by It Just Is, which was written by our own Dallas Taylor. And then finally, Incident on a Crosstown Bus, which was written by Gary Earl Ross. So without further ado, um, we are going to start and view Testing Day by Maggie Boyle. Um, it was directed by yours truly. Let me start this right here. And um, it starred Jessica Lebeck, Queen Robinson, and Justin Chorty. Okay. So here we go. Enjoy the show. Oh, we're not gonna, we got, nope, nope, nope. It wants to play Lady Gaga, so we gotta pause for a second. That would have been awesome, but probably not a good idea. <laughs> it's funny that wanted to put that in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. And now I can't get it off my screen. Hold tight folks, we'll be right there. That was the most random hilariousness I've ever seen in my life. Okay, let's try this again. Minus Lady Gaga, Testing Day by Maggie Boyle.
Okay, he's letting me into the Zoom meeting now. Okay, go ahead. Hi. Hello, Daisy. My name is Mr. Shea. I got the email with your accommodations. I understand that you downloaded the Read and Write program. Is that correct? Yep. It's just not working very well. It takes forever to read and write anything. It's just not working. Well, I'm sure it's working how it's supposed to. So to start this process, I need you to share your screen. Actually, I can't share my screen on Chromebook. All right, before we get started, I'm just gonna do a scan of your room. Oh, I don't see anyone else in there with you. So just, just wanted to make sure you can't cheat. Okay, I'm going upstairs now. You have to fill out some questions before we can get started. Can you read to me what you're doing? Name, age, address. Do you have any disabilities? Yes. Um, I need your help. Can you spell dyslexic for me? D as in David, Y as in yellow, S as in Sam, L as in Larry, E as in echo, X as in x-ray, I as in indigo, C as in Charlie, Accommodations? Extended time in the test read are your accommodations. I can't spell. E is an echo, X is an x-ray, T is in Tom, E is an echo, N is in Nancy, D is in David, E is an echo, D is in David. Space. I can actually spell the rest, thanks. You can begin now. But I told you the program isn't working. Oh, and we can't share a screen, right. Hmm. Hmm. My mom could read me the test. She's right in the other room. Uh, she can't. You could cheat. That's why we don't allow relatives. We should have made arrangements to have the proper technology. It's not my fault. I'm going to have to call my supervisor. Just give me one moment. You can mute it, you know. Okay, I'm muted. Mom, did you just hear what just happened? That man's an idiot. I can't believe he still has his job. He's just humiliating you. And yes, yes, I was listening. And then I went right upstairs and ranted to your dad. Mom, it's fine. There is no reason for you to type those words. Those accommodations do not apply. We were told that I could read you the test. We were told a bunch of things that change on a whim. Mom! Daisy, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. No, it's fine. I just want to do it and be done. Okay. Well, we could should just end this today. We can wait until you take the test at an actual college. Mom, I'm all right. You're clearly not. I can do this. We never had this problem with your sisters. I just don't like the way they're treating you. All right, you're right. I still, are you sure that I'll still be able to take the classes that I want to take? <clears throat> I promise. I'm sorry, I'm unmuted. I just got off the phone with my supervisor and they said that just for today, your mom can read it for you, Daisy. Remember, only for today. The whole purpose for downloading the R&W program is so that it would be able to read to you because normally you would have to have the computer read it. That's the way it is in college. I know. You're still muted, sweetie. And remember, you don't have to do this today. No, I can do this. I just want to be done with this and with today. I'm going to mute now. Hi. OK, I just needed a minute. So you can go get your mom now. Oh, she's right. Right 
in the other room. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Mom! Hello, Mr. Shea. I'm Daisy's mom. Oh, so you'll be reading the test for Daisy today. This isn't usually how we do things, but in this case, we'll make an exception. Yeah. Yes, I know. And this is how it was supposed to be from the beginning. I don't know why we had to go through all of this. It's rude. There is no reason to create all this difficult frustration for Daisy. Everything should have been in place already. And what my mom is trying to say is it's fine. It's all fine. Absolutely. I'm sorry for any imposition. Can we just start the test now, please? I understand. Whenever you're ready. Good. Great. See you after. Thanks, Ma. For what, sweetie? For standing up for me. But that's my job. I know, but I can do this. It's hard, but I am tough, tougher than you think. I know you can. I just wish you didn't have to. Me too, but the scenario isn't always going to be perfect and easy. I don't think it's like that for anybody. And sometimes instead of waiting until it will be ideal and easy, I just need to do it. I know, I can still help. And I'm really lucky to have you. Let's just get this done with this test today, okay? Yes, please. Great job. Applause, applause, applause. Yes, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So next up, we have it just is written and directed by Dallas Taylor, starring the incomparable Virginia Brannon and Dallas Taylor. What a day. <laughs> Finally, I can relax. There's kids shows on this late. Hi, friends. It's just is here and I need your help. Wow. One of these shows. What else is on? Can you? <sighs> Come on. I just changed the batteries in this ro remote last week. You can? <laughs> Great, I need your help. Oh no. <laughs> Look at this. This boy <sighs> took something that wasn't his and his mommy said that he should give it back and apologize. Huh? What is this? Is this justice or just is? What in the world am I watching? What channel is this, PBS? <laughs> justice? or just is. Justice. Do kids even know what that word means? You're right. That's justice. <laughs> Why won't this remote work? And there's obviously more to that situation. The boy should face some kind of punishment for stealing. How about this one? <sighs> this girl called another girl a bad name and made her cry. Now they are no longer friends. Well, that's not even a I mean, justice? Is this justice or just is? Actually, you know what? I think that just is. Justice or just is? This is so annoying. It just is. You got it. These two girls are probably too young to realize that there is much worse out there in the world than a bad name. What kind of Dora Sesame Street knockoff show is this? Well, that's not wrong. Let's try another one. <laughs> 
Uh, guess I'm stuck here. What's next? This baseball player celebrated when his team was winning by a lot. Then the other team threw a baseball at him. You're getting into sports? Justice or just is? Well, it's wrong, first and foremost. But in baseball? That's kind of both. Justice or just is? Justice or just is? What, I really have to answer? I just did. Fine. Uh, justice. That's right. It just is. I, I said both. I, uh, why am I getting so worked up about this? Now? Give me another one. Let's do another. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> this boy touched this girl where he's not supposed to after she told him no. He got in trouble for six months. <laughs> Whoa, what just happened? Is this justice? Or just is. That's not either. That's just not right. The boy did it three times and was in trouble for six months. <sighs> justice or just is? Oh, that's wrong. It just is. <sighs> wow. Okay. Can we get something a little lighter? I thought this was a kid's show. Here's another one. This boy hurt another boy because he was a different color than him and made his family sad. That boy didn't get in trouble. That is not cool. Is this justice or just is? I don't even want to answer that. It's neither. It's, it's not justice and it's not just is. It's wrong. That's right. It just is. You're doing great. Thank you for all your help. But it shouldn't be just is. Why are we teaching this to kids? Let's do another. I don't think I want another. This girl can't see or hear. She wasn't allowed to bring her own helper to her swimming competition. What? How is that even possible? Is this justice or just is? None of these are justice. And none of these should even be a thing. Justice or just is? What kind of world are we living in? It just is. Great job. I have not enjoyed this. Do we really live like this and allow this to just be? We made it. Hooray. Thank you for all your help. We really did a good job in figuring out what is justice and what just is. There wasn't even a lot of justice there. There was barely any. All that first boy did was apologize. That is not justice. Do you know what you can do to make sure there's more justice where you live? Wow. What a sobering question. What can you do to make sure there's more justice where you live? Well, I, I don't think I've done much. A few Facebook posts showing support, arguing with family members and friends in which I'm surprised at what they believe in. I've been to a few protests. I vote. I donate often. But I have. I mean, uh, I, that extra 80 cents as I'm cashing out does something for someone, right? I, right? I, I, I don't know. I'm no activist. <laughs> I try to do good. I try to be good. I admit, sometimes it's just to say I'm a good person. But does it matter in the end? I mean, if the deed is done, does its intent matter? So what did I want the barista to see that it was me who put the $5 bill in the tip jar? $5 is in there now, isn't it? No, that's... Now I'm just rambling. I guess I don't do much justice. That's great. We can all do things to make sure there's justice where we live. I have to go back inside for dinner. Thanks for playing with me. Bye now. What was that name again? Oh, yeah. It's just is.
Woohoo! That was also awesome. Great job. I'm going to close out a couple windows here so we can get started with our final performance of the night. Great job. Great job. Okay. So our final performance of the night is Incident on a Crosstown Bus, written by the incredible Gary Earl Ross, directed by Virginia Brannon, starring Virginia Brannon, Janae Leonard, and Michael Kowal. Enjoy. Ms. Farhani? Yes. I'm Detective Mills. Sorry about the restraints. Standard procedure until we sort things out. Better you handcuff me than shoot me. Before we get started, would you like coffee or maybe tea or a soda? Yes. Tea, please. No sugar. All right. I'll be right back. I double cupped it, but it's still pretty hot, so be careful. Thank you. Now your name, Adila. It's pronounced Adila. All right. Uh, your ID says you live on North Park Avenue. Yes. I'd like to ask you a few questions to clear up a few things about what happened on the bus. Yes, of course. Uh, one of the men you shot said you screamed Allah Akbar when you pulled the trigger. No, ma'am, that is not right. Then tell me what is right. The phrase you mean is Allahu Akbar, God is greatest. Oh. But I didn't say that either. I said nothing. What does the other man say? Not much, I'm afraid. He's dead. Who, who was he? Detective? The man who died? Um, Melvin Garrity, laid off from a flooring company out by the Galleria. Did you know him? No. Do you recall ever seeing him before? No. What about the other man, Leonard Tubbins? I cannot even remember their faces now. What does the other people on the bus say? The driver didn't know what was happening, but he said you were a regular rider. Yes, Mr. Hamoud. He's a very nice man. He, he, he once showed me a picture of his six-year-old granddaughter when she had her karate trophy. Oh. Well, he told me you always get off at Amherst Station. The train takes me downtown to the hospital. Which hospital? Women and children's. I work there as a pharmacist, evening shift. I, I don't own a car yet, so I take the bus and train every day. I am what they call essential personnel. <laughs> I expect so during this crazy time. Are you saving up for one? A car, I mean? Yes. A couple of people in the front of the bus say you just started shooting, so they hit the floor. They thought you were a terrorist who wanted to kill everyone. Because of my hijab? Yes. And what do the people close to me in the back of the bus say? No one heard Allahu Akbar. How could they, when I never said it? The uh, elderly man who gave you his seat and the four women we've talked to all say the same thing. And that is? Two young white males got on the bus and pulled off their face masks as they made their way toward the back. They were kind of loud, complaining that masks infringed on their freedom. Yes, they were loud and rude and got much too close to everyone. And when they got to where you were sitting, they started harassing you. 
they ripped off my mask and said they had the right to see my face because I wasn't a real American. But you're wearing a mask now. I always carry extra in my purse. I put on a fresh one before you came. Of course. They spit in my face. You, you took my purse. The first mask is in the zipper pocket in a plastic bag. Just spit on it if you want to run DNA. Thank you. I used a sanitary wipe and on my face and hands before I, I put on a new mask. Was that all right? Well, that's fine. And you admit firing the gun, so there's no need for a gun shoe residue test. So um, what happened next? They called me terrible names. Like what? Raghead, ISIS bitch, sand nigger. One of them even said I must be wearing a suicide vest and he tried to fill my breast. Take all the time you need. Thank you. They said I didn't belong in their country and that I should go back where I came from. One of them grabbed my hijab and threatened to hang me with it. One. The one, not the one who was trying to feel me, the, the other one. He pulled it so tight. Is that how you remember everything? Yes, exactly. So then you pulled your nine millimeter Ruger LCP from your purse and shot them both. Yes, I have a concealed carry permit. I. Because I work late hours and the bus and train, sometimes they... I, <laughs> I understand. I've run your permit. There's no problem with it. So let's get back to the man who was assaulting you. I was twisting my hijab around my neck. I said I couldn't breathe and he said, good, and pulled tighter. Uh, may, I, may I show you my neck? Uh, yes. Oh my. What, what did you just write? That you have a neck abrasion, which supports your story. You, you must understand, I, I was afraid for my life. I do. My hijab is an expression of my faith. It has nothing to do with ISIS or other mad men. Why do some people assume the worst about others? If I knew that, I'd be something other than a cop. Just remember, it's some people, not all. And their hate becomes violent. I expect where you come from, violence is a way of life. Buffalo? I was born here. Oh. But I don't think it's more violent than your average American city. <laughs> It has good years and bad years, but this isn't a particularly good year for anybody anywhere. Now, now when my parents were born, well, that's another story. Unless you need to know, I'll just say America is their country now. You've never seen a bigger Bills fan than my father, oh. though my brother prefers the Sabres. <laughs> <laughs> One final question. Why hollow points? Did you know they expand to cause maximum tissue damage? I took a pistol class before I was issued my gun permit. Well, then you know. I learned hollow points are less likely to pass through the body and injure someone else. Oh, that's right. That nice old man who gave me a seat was right behind the guy who was trying to choke me. The second guy kept held him back and kept him from trying to help me. Mr. Greenberg. Yes, that is what he told me. Is he all right, Mr. Greenberg? It looked He's... like the man was hurting his arm. He's fine. It was just a bruise. I've seen him on the bus before, but I never knew his name. Joseph Greenberg. He's an accountant. <laughs> Why do you smile? He's worried about you. He is? He came to the station and refused to leave until he sees for himself you're all right. In fact, he's waiting out there right now with the bus driver and your father. He says if you need a lawyer, he'll call his brother. In Arabic? 
My name, Adila, means justice. How could it be justice if someone, an innocent person like Mr. Greenberg, is hurt for someone else's wrongdoing? Uh, Captain? Mills, the feds are here. DHS. Well, that took no time at all. Tell me they're not in camo. No, but they brought somebody from the Joint Terrorism Task Force along for their ride. Of course they did. They want to take over the investigation. Of course they do. SOP for suspected terrorist activity. Have you been watching, sir? I have. Well, then you know one terrorist is dead and the other was wounded. This young lady shot them in self-defense. Woohoo! That was awesome as well. Let me just stop this before we start going into videos that start sharing. There we go. So really terrific job. Yay. That was fun. Yes, it was, it was great. fun to watch that. And we're excited <laughs> tonight. We have Virginia and Dallas as well as Jessica here with us um, to talk a little bit about what we did, um, why we did it, and why it's important that um, especially inclusive can continue to do work like this. So um, I'm going to toss it to Dallas first. Like, um, can you talk about where the idea came from and, and why you, you did it and did all the things with it? Um, so the idea kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, the, way, the, way, the way that I write is kind of like narrative style. Um, kind of like Winnie the Pooh, where the narrator is like in the story. But for this one, I just had this, the idea of like you, when you watch like a kid's show, when you were a kid and like the, the show would talk back to you and you talk back to it, it was like you're having a conversation. Um, I just thought of the idea of having like, you actually have the conversation with the show and like it starts off light and then all of a sudden you dip into like serious topics. And it's like, wait a minute, I thought this was, Nickelodeon or, or Nick and <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, so the, the research or the finding different things that would portray justice or not justice was unfortunately very easy to find, um, especially in the past year that we had. Um, I made a reference to the Brock Turner case um, where he, yeah. I believe he uh, sexually assaulted someone uh, I think a count, count of three or four times and only got six months in jail for it. Uh, the other one about the swimmer, the Olympic athlete was Becca Myers, who was told that she couldn't, she's deaf and blind, and she was told that she couldn't bring her assistant to the Olympics with her, so she quit the USA team. And then the rest were just generic things that we unfortunately see just about every day in this country and in this world. So. Those were pretty easy to find, unfortunately, but I think uh, putting those in there was, I don't know the word for it, but it felt right to put those in there to get the message across to spread awareness that this stuff happens every day. And I think a lot of people, we try to do good all the time we try to say that we're good all the time, but sometimes, you know, we're not perfect. We slip up sometimes and you want you sometimes want to be noticed for putting the money in the tip jar. Like, Hey, I just, I, I know it, it's in there, but I kind of want Make you sure to they see it. it was, yeah, I want, I appreciate you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like those little things where you want to do good, but you sometimes want to be noticed for doing good. I think that's because sometimes there's so much bad going on in the world that you don't want to be lumped in with. No, 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 I'm not doing what they're doing. I'm over here trying to fight the good fight. Um, but I think those, the real heroes are the ones who just do it and go on with their lives. So that was what I kind of wanted to get across with that play. 
when I think the word is necessary. Yeah. Like, yes. you know what I mean? It was important that you added those things, but I think, especially for our time, right? Those, and I, I know in my brain, I had that instant recall. Like I knew what was happening, what this translates to 20 years down the road. I, I don't know. But for me, the first thing I thought of was Brock Turner and here we are, right? So it opens up. And I think this is, this is your English teaching, sir. How it, <laughs> because it opens up this, um, it's more words than you needed to put down. Um, you know, just here, you know, you don't have to say his name, but all of these things that came and the white privilege and, and all of these things that came as a result of, of him getting caught or lack thereof is more than you didn't even have to put down on a piece of paper. It wasn't, you didn't need it because we knew it. And unfortunately, you know, we have this thing where we repeat history constantly, you know, so who knows what Brock Turner will be in 20 years, but um, that's why I think this thing, as you continue to share it and, and build on it, if that's what you decide to do, will still be relevant going forward. I mean, I hate that it has to be, um, but like you were saying also, you know, we have some things happening in our world that aren't great. And we need to start learning for what we're doing. I mean, social justice defined, right? Like just broadly is equal rights and equitable opportunities. Basic, benign, you know, you can go into it and make all these other things, but that's not what's happening even in our world today. Well, they've been and talking about it for centuries and we're still yes, not there yet, you know? Exactly. <laughs> and I think to your point, awareness is there. I think there are people that try you know, to get, and you want people to see the extra five bucks you put in there, right? But I think the stories, and this is why Inclusive does this work, and I think why um, No Labels, No Walls does this work as well, is to at least keep putting it out there. And that maybe the next person, you know, will, will and I kept thinking with yours, Dallas, it was like, if you can imagine if a kid was watching that show maybe they're going to catch on to something and be that change going forward. And I love that. I, I, it was super clever. Oh yeah. The justice and the justice. I mean, it was, it was very well written. So kudos. And I think Virginia's face acting like that was all I did. I, was there and, <laughs> I mean, you are so emotive. I don't even know if you realize it, but it's freaking hilarious to watch you act. And it's amazing. <laughs> But both of you together just had that balance. So I thought it was extraordinary. It was, it was really a lot good. of fun. It was, yeah. yeah. Made, made me think about stuff too, you yeah. know. And we need that I, reminder. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought it was perfect to have Virginia in there with like just this, I think someone put it in the comment, just exasperated person. They just got home from work. They can't get their TV to work. And all of a sudden there's this kid show on. And now it's this, this corny kid show just talking back to them. Like, right, I'll play along. Like, what, like, what am I even watching right now? And the kids are just so innocent. Is yep. this justice or just is? I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't, what, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait a minute. What did he just say? <laughs> well, it was really good. I, you know, you should be proud. I know so we're fun. super proud of you. That was so well written, directed, acted. You guys really did good. tremendously. So kudos. Um, we also had testing day, and unfortunately, Maggie, um, who wrote the play, couldn't be here because of her birthday. So happy birthday, Maggie! Happy birthday, Maggie! Yes, happy we birthday. hope you're having a great happy time. Happy birthday, Maggie! Yeah. Yes, I, and I apologize if I'm off, but I believe that Maggie is just 16. Um, oh, so wow. she's not it's like 17. I mean, she's young. Um, she is the daughter of Matt Boyle, who also is a great friend of Inclusive, and and is a tremendous writer and director in Springville, and for us as well. Um, but she sent uh, her play over and for me um, that was one of the first ones that was submitted because we did do an open call for work right we didn't just pick people because we love them we, even though we do <laughs> we picked the ones that we thought would fit within um, this social justice platform um, but when I started reading the play and saw um, the experiences that this particular person who was played by Jess um, is dealing with um, it, it for me kind of took me back for when Jessica was in school so and I'm sure this is still ongoing I would be really surprised to hear if it didn't but about the need for accommodations for things as simple as taking a test that are often um, you are almost forced to beg for them oh it's still in the news yes yeah absolutely no, it is still, yeah it's still in the news. absolutely but a minor accommodation like 
you know, something, sometimes people learn better because they hear something, others have to watch it. And I, I just can't believe we're at this point in our world where we still have to make accommodation. I mean, and that tips right into Dallas. So it was a beautiful kind of lead in, right? But that people that have extra needs or need extra assistance have to practically beg to get them as though someone is doing a favor for them is completely problematic. Or you have to force them, you know, and they yeah. should just, you know, realize not everybody's the same. It's just, they should, I can't believe, you know, people and here haven't we are, figured right? that out 2021, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, it makes me crazy. Absolutely. And, and one of the issues, you know, with it, beside that, you know, and I will say it, you know, from the rooftops is that people aren't disabled, our environments are, right? Our world was not created for everybody. It was created to make it easy for people that made the rules. Right. So somebody that might need their mother to read a test to them um, is inconvenient to somebody who can read. So that's where the disabling comes in. And I think Maggie, especially, you know, at her young age, which is super impressive. And I hope, I don't know what her trajectory is for, for work or, or theater or art. But I really hope that she continues to, to work on stuff like this because she really was able to flesh that out in a way um, that I think some seasoned adults could not. Oh, do. yes. Very insightful. Very, Very insightful. And I don't know if it was based on personal experience. I, I don't I have no idea. Um, but just in, in the bit that we did, um, that was well, the first time reading. It was like, holy mackerel, she really tapped in. And then Jess, you know, came into the role um you know she was daisy the minute i read it and it was just simply because of experience right like we live it and mm -hmm. that she was able yep. to kind of capitalize and just do you want to talk about how you <clears throat> prepared and what you did well it definitely brought back a lot of memories of what i've gone through the system growing up with like school and stuff and yeah there's a lot of things when it comes to you know with learning about you know anything in life trying to get involved you know be out there like everybody else you need to have some assistance and it and it is hard because you are like you can feel hesitant like if you ask for help it can be fearful I'm not gonna lie because even I got get scared at times with asking for help you know because I don't want to seem weak but it isn't it's just a normal human being thing. And this was a great opportunity to uh, do this project, to bring awareness to, you know, uh, with like anything that's happening in our world, as you can see with, with everything, we're kind of falling back, which we don't want to really continue to happen because we're still trying to continue to move forward to bring awareness to discrimination, anything social justice and this is really important to really bring that to the table to let yeah. everybody know that any anything can happen but you know you i could piggyback on dallas and say you know like you try to look for good things in the world it is difficult you know you you know you try to say to yourself there is good in the world you know it even though there might be bad days, but you try to really remain positive in those type of situations. Well, you know and I mean? think to get up to your point with that, like the, the role that Justin played, right? Like he is the moderator for this exam. Mm -hmm. um, seems like a kind, loving gentleman, right? He's just following the rules. And I think this is another thing that, you know, we're a rule driven society, right? Like, well, you can't have, let me scan your room. I've got to make sure. So really, I don't think that he is malicious in intent at all. I think he just sees that he's doing his job. Um, and we have that happening in every aspect of education. I mean, we still have scripted teaching in schools and teachers do it happily because they've learned it and they, they're doing their job. It's terrible and I, I don't care. Like I will say that from the rooftops, we should not be teaching children from out of a book and following it like a timeline, but it's happening in our and, forest communities, right? But, but they do it because yeah. it's their job. Um, also to Queen's part, you know, she played that parent who is a very strong, you know, she's, she's frustrated. She's trying to help her daughter. 
she's not trying to help her daughter cheat. She's trying to help her daughter be successful. Right. And I think that, again, this idea, this Maggie's this old soul, right, that she's able to tap into all three of those folks in such a way that she related it, I thought was extraordinary. Yeah. It was yeah, the like story, amazing. Yeah, yeah the really story good. was well written. I ain't gonna lie. It was really well written. I had no idea she was that young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt, I didn't know that. <laughs> Matt has some talented children. We, we were joking. We ran into them at uh, Speed of Light when we went to see Quentin, who does work with Inclusive there. And um, his wife was there and she goes, well, we have five kids. So we've got three more that hopefully will write for us, right? We've already had two. We've got three more to go, right? But it was really awesome. We're excited. And then lastly, our play, Incident on a Crosstown Bus. I don't know a whole lot about it um, other than we were doing this festival and I reached out to Gary and said, do you have something? Because Gary Earl Ross, and we know he's an, ex an extraordinary writer, um, and he often touches on these subjects. And he's like, I got the perfect thing. We yep. did this as part of, I think it was Buffalo Quickies at Alleyway Theater a few oh. years ago. I, I'm, I think that's what he told me. If not, it was done in Alleyway as part of just like some shorts. And then tossed it over to Virginia. So Virginia, if you want to talk about your casting and all of those oh. fun things. Well, um, I had met Janae through Ujima, through the Free Fred Brown Project. And so I knew she was a very talented uh, young actress and she has she had gone to Buff State uh, in theater. And uh, so I immediately thought of her for the part. And um, she she I think she did a very good job. And um, it was it was just a to me, it was it was such an interesting piece because uh, it has such an interesting arc because at the beginning, the, the officer is a little bit, you know, skeptical and just doing her job and, and being, you know, and then as she realizes what has happened and, and how the, how the actual events, you know, went forward, then she definitely realizes what the real situation is and hope, and, you know, and so by the end, she's not happy. And so, I mean, you know, I can only hope that the, that her superior uh was able to that they that it turned out okay for this young lady in the long run you know even though it's not the real thing but um yeah. i know but like she leaves us thinking about her like that Absolutely. line where you say the guy is out there the bus driver is out there and your father like yep that's such a powerful line especially for a woman that's now in this situation right that right they're all she's, there she's got support she's got she's a yes. she's a supported person in this community she works at this hospital every day takes the public transportation she's you know and then suddenly these two crazy young white boys come on the the train and start harassing her it's, of course she defended herself you know it's and it's and unfortunately it's it's not a story that's totally a fiction either you know these kind of these kind of confrontations happen on an ongoing basis thank god not as much in buffalo unless i there's a lot that hap happening that i've not heard of which would surprise me but i know that i've read of of it happening in other places especially the last few years we won't go on that tangent though <laughs> <laughs> well and i also love the line where you know you say to her well you must be used to this where you come from and she says right from buffalo like the the assumption well, yes yes and i yes. think that that i guess moment of discomfort for that detective yes will help the detective learn and i think those are the things that we use this kind of medium art when we we do this stuff if it if it touches something and makes you stop and pause and think it's doing its job absolutely and that that space of discomfort is our greatest part of learning yes Dallas. I mean, just to speak to that point too, I thought it was, it was, I think it was brilliantly placed too for, for the, it's building up to right now, like I'm compassionate for you. I can see where you're coming from. Like, I understand you now. Oh, you're used to this, where you come from. It's like, oh wait, I don't, I still don't know everything. Even though we've gotten, we've crossed this barrier of like, all right, now I see what you're coming from. I, I understand what you did. And now I still had this prejudice or this assumption that I Is knew that something about you that I didn't. Is that a microaggression? Uh, is that kind of what's it's like? Because it was like unconscious, I think. Because I think, I think she just kind of the character just kind of assumed, you know, because yeah. she still has the very soft spoken and the very minor accent. I mean, she could have come 
as when she was super young, you know, and then her just not realizing, you know, that she, that she was from that other, from not from another country. She's from here in Buffalo, you know, yeah. I think it's still that posits, considered, <laughs> I don't know if it's a microaggression, but it's still positive difference oh yeah because up until that point the detective still sees her as an other yes and thank and god i she think took to the opportunity point, to learn yeah, to, from it to yeah. dallas's point where that when when he drops that there right where gary puts that in that moment she is looking at a woman just like herself That's up right. until that point even the empathy was kind of not forced but was like Oh, this poor other girl. Right. Then it was, well, we are both from Buffalo. We are right. both women. What is happening? And I think that was a turning point for that particular character. And maybe for both of them. Yeah. And you know, that, that gives me chills like thinking about it because oh, Gary is so great so at good. <laughs> dropping these little things in, right? They're like these juicy nuggets. Dallas does that. Where, yes. you, you know, you're left with those little pieces that, that say so much. But when you start breaking it down and seeing it, it's it's just brilliant. And I know Dallas loves him. You are on your way, buddy. You are, you're, you're working your <laughs> way to Gary Earl Rostam because you are equally as talented. I think it's just, it was really spectacular. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. It is like, it can be a little bit, well, for me, at least a little bit tough to write about that stuff because you could go on and on and on. And I think the way Gary did it and also the way Maggie did her, they were really well written. Um, it got straight to the point. Um, social justice was definitely in there in different kind of varieties. Um, but it was, I really liked both of those. And it, it kind of leads to uh, both of their plays and a little bit of mine where it comes down to just having compassion and empathy for other people and because we don't we still don't know where anyone else has come from we don't know what they've gone through as empathetic as we can be as compassionate as we could be we still don't know other people's situations so we have to try our best to again be as good as we can and sort of try to rid ourselves of some of those preconceived notions that we may have about other people, things that we've heard about other people and just get rid of those and start with a clean slate. Right. And it's, it's hard for people because those, that's how we've learned. Like those things have been just ingrained in our heads through either teaching from a book or from a person from TV media that we consume. Those things are just like ingrained in our memories right when we're, we're young and as we get older it's about like chipping away at some of that concrete before it officially sets in and I think for us now to try to for the younger people that cement is being poured in at the moment yeah so we have to get to it quick before it sets in try to form that in a way that will leave them in a right path on that sidewalk instead of veering into traffic like how we did that the metaphor with the <laughs> there you go well i like how you say too like, yeah you know where we're human and we all make mistakes and i also think you know this kind of idea people think that it their beliefs are this carved into stone like you said we have to keep chipping and maybe one time you thought something you know it's okay to revisit that and change your mind and I think we have right. to do that. You know, some people were raised in a way where it is completely opposite to what their current belief systems are. And they spend their entire lives trying to be different. And you might still slip. I, I think the detective, I don't think her heart was in the wrong place. You know, just like I don't think Justin's was, or even, you know, the person that was watching the TV show. I think that that's that place where we are lifelong learners. And we need to, to embrace difference. We need to understand those things and also try to understand where it's coming from in our head because then we can get rid of it. Like if we're thinking something that's, you know, not the greatest idea, why is that happening? And to go back and reflect that self-reflection and understanding, I think it's important. And that is that thread among all three. 
that, you know, change is, is possible. I think that, to, you know, to your point, I think empathy goes a long way. And at the end of the day, I think we need to be kind to each other. We don't right. know the shoes people have walked in and it's the kill a mockingbird, right? Like that walk a mile in a man's shoes and you can tell how they live, right? But you can't do that before then. You don't understand that life. And I think we need to have more of that understanding to, to have those conversations. Yeah. Well, it, the, the starting point is, is realizing that that's needed too. I think a lot of people, they, they're, they're raised with, you know, they, they don't, they don't realize that, that it's even needed. It's something that they're missing in their life and in their perspective on, on life. You know, it takes time. And theater can help show that to people. And that's one of the things I love about theater. It shows different viewpoints, different perspectives. And then going back to your point, Amy, about like we're able, we, we are able to say that we were wrong in our belief or something. There's a book by Adam Grant. I forget the title, but his idea is that we spend a lot of our lives in the, in the mindsets of occupations that that we've never worked in. So like we have preachers, politicians, and prosecutors. Where preachers, their mindset is I have to preach what I've learned, preach what I know to you. A prosecutor, we're trying to prove our, our thing is right. And then as a politician, we have a constituent that we have to abide by. So whatever, we don't really think what we really think. We think what these other people want us to think so we can get on their side. And those are the sort of mindsets that a lot of people have. And in those mindsets, there's not really a lot of room to say, well, I was wrong on that. So we, right. but as humans, we, we can say that something that we thought before, oh, I, was, I was wrong on that. Like I learned, I understand it now. And that, was, that, that, was, that wasn't good, my bad. And people need to learn that that's a strength. That's not a weakness. Yeah. They think it's a weakness, but it's not. It's a strength. You learn. But that's also that pre-programming because like Jess said, you know, right. I don't want to ask for help because it's perceived as being weakness. And, you know, when you get to a certain age, mine, it's like, I don't care. Like, if you, <laughs> you know, yeah, I need help. I can't do this alone. Right. But when you're 20 years old, maybe you're not asking for that help. Maybe not even 30, you know, but you really have to, uh, you know, to your right. point is that it's okay to ask for help. We're here to help each other. We're here to learn from each other. That's what makes our world beautiful. And yeah, yeah, I think that's, that was fantastic point, Dallas. Really, really it, great. It really was a fantastic point. Yes. <laughs> so in our Absolutely. last three minutes, um, I just want to give a quick shout out to... Western New York Improv. We will be yes. beginning a collaboration with them that starts this month, um, October 21st through 24th. We will be performing uh, live, this live, month, live, 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 <laughs> first time in two years. <laughs> at the, yes, the Williamsville Meeting House. Um, we will be doing five short plays by Ellen Schur, which is going to be really exciting with some intermission work done by West New York Improv. It's going to be a fun, be a fun and funny, fun night, funny <laughs> night. It's going to be a lot of fun. And again, first time in two years that we have been on stage, we've been yes. uh, virtual throughout. That does not mean though, we won't be virtual. We're here now. This is awesome. And I'm hoping that on the last day that we'll be able to record it, to share at a later date. So that way folks that couldn't make it out to the theater or didn't feel comfortable coming can view it. But if you do feel comfortable, please do come. Ticket information is coming soon. It's only 10 bucks to come see the bucks. show. It's a bargain. Yes. Come see us. It is. A portion of the proceeds go to the Williamsville Meeting House to keep it up and running. It's a beautiful facility. Um, we're super excited about that. Um, Dallas, Virginia, and Jessica are there, along with many other actors that you'll be hearing about as we roll out. Um, we have a beautiful poster that was made by Kat Kwiatkowski, um, who is also in the show. So yep. we have a lot of really fun things coming um, really quickly. That October 21st date is pay what you can. So please come. That's our dress rehearsal. We'll have a full show that night. Preview. You, preview night. Yes. <laughs> and if you can't make it to that one um, again, we are there all of that weekend. Um, this is also the final weekend for Speed of, of Dark. Dark, which stars Quentin Gray. 
who Yay. has done a lot of work with inclusive theater. If you have time, oh, well, tomorrow, it's the last day, right? Sunday. Yeah. So oh, that's I believe right. it's a matinee. <gasps> so if you can get there, get there. Do they have a Sunday show. Yeah, I don't do. know if they have a night one. I know that I think they have an afternoon, but if you can get there, go see them. It's a really great show, really great cast um, yes. in the art of Western New York space, which is the former Ujima building. So get down there if you can. Also some other great theater going around. I know we're going to be going after the Kabanoki. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, um, WNED tomorrow, Dallas will be on the radio. What time are you going to be on? From seven to two, WBFO. We're doing pledge. Oh, we're looking nice. for sustainers. sustainers. Uh, I'm a sustainer, and I'm going to up my sustainment. So I will be in touch with you about that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to bump it up a hair. Can I? Can nice. I give some shout outs? Please do some shout outs. In the in the comments, a shout out to Michael Finelli. He's in the oh, comments. Oh, Michael! Yeah, Michael Finelli. A shout Woo. out to my 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 good friend. He's like a brother, Tori. I appreciate yes. you watching. Yes, um, thank you. And then a, a final thought, if I can give one, uh, for people to think more like a scientist. Mm. Your opinion is just a hypothesis. <laughs> Ooh, that's fire. I don't even know nice. how to follow that. Other than nice. with a have a great night. That's poetic. That should be a play. Start writing the minute we get off. <laughs> There oh, and go. lastly, I do have to follow. Lastly, just so you guys know, you can watch this video. It'll be up. Or you can watch each individual social justice play. They are on YouTube, and I'll be posting the link shortly. So without further ado, have a wonderful evening. We will see you October 21st through 24th. Be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. That's right. Thank you. Have a good Woo. night. Good night. Woo. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. <laughs>